Chapter 9 I jerked backward, kicking fast. The outlaw didn't follow. Head cocked, he seemed to be assessing whether I was worth troubling himself over. More dead fish swirled between us, blocking shade from view. I yanked down the manta board and heaved myself onto it, driven by the image of his sightless eyes. No, not sightless. Shade wasn't blind. Those must have been dark lenses. The current sent the drifting fish upward. I twisted to look back, but only saw the kelp field. Gunning the manta, I headed for home. The power was back on. There was no reason to stay. Hopefully the crops would survive the drop in temperature. The lights illuminated a few half-eaten fish, swirling in the currents. All that remained of the peavy's livestock. All gone. Through escape or death. Slowly, fear drained out of me and my rage returned. The sea flight gang could have just taken the supplies they wanted. They didn't have to destroy the peavy's house and farm. Everything Sheryl and Lars had created out of nothing. I slowed the manta. Gemma was right. If I followed Shade and learned the location of the gang's hideout, Ranger Grimes could arrest the whole lot of them. Then Representative Tupper would reconsider the benefits of helping Bensla territory to flourish. It was us against them. Simple as that. Settlers against outlaws. I looped back to the field. The swaying stalks were easy enough to spot. I stayed low over the kelp and followed the movement. Shade plowed toward the edge of the field, the bubble fence, marking the end of the Peavy's property, lay beyond. The end of the continental shelf was another mile east, and it was a heck of a drop off from there. In most places, the shelf sloped gently down to the abyssal plain, but not behind the Peavy property. Hugh and I had cruised along the edge many times. It was a rocky sea cliff that plummeted into the darkness of the abyssal plain, which was nearly two miles below the Earth's the ocean surface. Plenty of sea caves pockmarked the face of that cliff. Maybe one of them was where the outlaws moored the specter. Still hovering, I propped myself on my elbows to watch the outlaw exit the field. Inside the dome of flexiglass, that was his helmet, the back of Shade's bald head glowed an unearthly white. Then he stepped through the bubble fence, and I noticed the harpoon gun strapped to his back. Exactly the size I'd found too cumbersome to bring along. How I wished I had it now. Mom and Pa would hate this plan, but they weren't here. With the bitter taste of adrenaline rising in my throat, I revved the manta and shot through the wall of bubbles. On the other side, the sea was cobalt blue and featureless. In the distance, I made out a faint glow. Not the greenish bioluminescent light of a sea creature, but the warm glow from the crown lights of a helmet. I tailed shade until, without warning, the glow vanished like a snuffed matchstick. I veered to the right. Had he guessed that I was tra trailing in his wake? Slowing the manta, I circled around. But before I could even begin my search for him, light blasted me. There stood shade, boots planted wide on the sea floor, crown lights on bright, hefting the jumbo-sized harpoon launcher. Spotting me, he lifted his gun and took aim. I reared the manta, but not high enough. A harpoon smashed into the bottom of the board, nearly jarring my teeth from my jaws with its impact. Wheeling about, I revved the manta to make my escape. But instead of leaping in response, the board sputtered. I jammed the hand grips to the highest speed, yet I jerked to a full stop. Cutting the motor, I tried restarting it, but seemed that which seemed to work. The manta shimmied to life under my body, but then it plowed backward through the water. As hard as I twisted the grips, I couldn't get the board to respond, let alone stop. Rigging forward, I tipped my head over the edge. A harpoon jutted from the manta's underside, wobbling in the water's drag. No surprise there, but I hadn't realized the spear was attached to a chain. Flipping onto my back, I sat up and saw Shade putting one hand over the other, drawing in his catch like a reanimated corpse, bloodyless and black-eyed. I kicked myself free of the manta and swam upward, pausing only to flick the button that released my fins from my boots. Unless Shade dropped his harpoon launcher, he'd never catch up to me. His size worked against him, even without the weight of his gun pulling him down. Still, I leveled out and kept swimming, now horizontal. Eventually, my muscles ached from exertion. I slowed and dropped to the seafloor, checking around me as I went. There was no telltale glow of a helmet light anywhere, only endless midnight blue water.